world stands and watches in awe as the growing tension between the United States and its popular rivals, China and Russia, increases. These countries have spent the past few decades upgrading their military arsenal, especially their aviation sector. They have developed terrifying hypersonic missiles and fighter jets that make use of laser technology and have capabilities that the world has never seen before. The United States has responded to this increasing threat by investing millions of dollars into developing next-generation hypersonic missiles that would defend its skies and render its rivals' tactics useless. How powerful is this weapon? Is it capable of turning the tide of the war? Join us as we look into the most dangerous space hypersonic weapon that America just tested. Since the 19th and 20th centuries, the United States has always been at the forefront of technological advancement, closely followed by China and Russia. The country is famous for its second-to-none weapons of war, the huge investments dedicated to developing new weaponry, and always being one step ahead of other countries. But since the post-Cold War era, the U.S. has relaxed and significantly reduced the development of new nuclear weapons, while China and Russia have not relented in the development of advanced weapons. Russia's new advanced missile, a hypersonic air-launched ballistic missile that's known as the Kinzhal, entered service in December 2017 and is renowned for its speed of up to Mach 10. The U.S. defense authorities have determined that existing radar systems are inadequate for detecting and monitoring hypersonic weapons. This revelation comes in the wake of American President Joe Biden's confirmation in March 2022 that Russia employed hypersonic missiles during the conflict in Ukraine, emphasizing their formidable nature and the challenges of countering them. The missile's overall design is derived from the older ground-launched 9K720 Iskander missile, but has been adapted for air launching with a modified guidance section for the Kinzhal. Its exceptional speed enhances target penetration compared to lighter, slower cruise missiles. The Kinzhal is specifically engineered to target NATO warships, posing threats to strategic missile systems in European Russia, as well as to eliminate NATO missile defense systems, ballistic missile defense ships, and land objects near Russian borders. While Russian media emphasize the hypersonic feature, portraying it as a new and advanced design, the Kinzhal utilizes standard ballistic missile technology at increased speeds. The missile's range is stated as 2,000 kilometers when carried by the MiG-31K and 3,000 kilometers when carried by the 222M3. The fabrication cost for one Cage 47 Kinzhal hypersonic missile is approximately $10 million. The Kinzhal became part of the arsenal of six new Russian strategic weapons unveiled by President Vladimir Putin in March 2018. Deployed on various platforms including the MiG-31K, 2160M, 222M3M, and reportedly the Su-34, the Kinzhal has demonstrated its capabilities in operational settings. By December 2018, aircraft armed with Kinzhal missiles had conducted numerous sorties over the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. Throughout 2019 and 21, the Kinzhal continued to undergo testing and deployment, with notable instances of launches in the Arctic and Syria. Also, reports in early 2022 suggested a deployment of MiG-31 interceptors armed with Kinzhal missiles from Soltsy Air Base to Chernyakovsk Naval Air Base in Russia's Kaliningrad exclave. The Russian Aerospace Force launched Kinzhal missiles in February 2022. In response to heightened tensions, Vladimir Putin ordered the Russian Aerospace Forces to conduct permanent patrols over the Black Sea region with MiG-31K aircraft armed with Kinzhal missiles in October 2023, claiming enhanced mid-flight retargeting capabilities. During the Russo-Ukrainian War, the Russian military asserted the use of Kinzhal missiles to target Ukrainian facilities. President Biden also acknowledged the significance of these missiles, emphasizing their formidable nature against a defense system. Subsequent reports indicated further use of Kinzhal missiles in April and May 2023, with Ukrainian claims of intercepting several missiles. On January 26, 2023, 
the Ukrainian Air Force reported that it intercepted multiple Kinzhal missiles and drones, despite casualties resulting from the attacks. Notably, on March 9, Ukrainian cities experienced a substantial barrage of 84 missiles, including six Kinzhals, the most extensive use of these missiles to date. On May 4, 2023, a claimed interception of a Kinzhal missile using a MIM-104 Patriot missile defense system in Kyiv marked a significant achievement. The incident prompted discussions regarding the theoretical capability of the Patriot system against air-launched hypersonic missiles. As of June 13, Ukrainian Patriot operators asserted that Kinzhal missiles traveled at approximately 1,240 meters per second, challenging Russia's claimed maximum speed. The ongoing conflict underscores the dynamic nature of hypersonic weapons and the complexities associated with their interception. On the other hand, China has also created a weapon with a hypersonic missile that is larger and five times faster than the Kinzhal. This country's weapon is known as the Fractional Orbital Bombardment System. China's FOBS is a nuclear-capable missile that maneuvers into low Earth orbit and strategically deorbits to strike a target globally, similar to an intercontinental ballistic missile. Notably, it boasts extended range and significantly higher velocities. The testing of this weapon in 2021 took U.S. intelligence by surprise. This type of weapon has the potential to render existing advanced missile defense systems useless once deployed. A FOBS, upon launch, ascends to low Earth orbit, orbiting the planet until its intended target becomes visible. Upon identification, the hypersonic missile descends, reaching its peak speed of Mach 27. Conceptually, one can envision the FOBS as akin to a space shuttle carrying a nuclear warhead, diverging from the traditional astronaut-carrying capsule. Covering the entire Earth with its operational range, the FOBS can approach the United States from any direction, presenting a formidable challenge as it arrives at least 10 minutes faster than an intercontinental ballistic missile. What heightens the threat is the FOBS's remarkable agility and intelligence. Capable of evading defense systems while en route to its target, the hypersonic missile becomes even more elusive, complicating tracking and interception efforts. The combination of high-speed agility and intelligence creates an unpredictable scenario, narrowing the window for the U.S. to react from the moment the missile is detected to its potential impact on U.S. territory. This rapid and evasive nature underscores the urgency for effective defense strategies against such advanced weapons. The United States has once again sought to maintain its dominance over near-peer competition, focusing its efforts on the development of a more advanced next-generation defense system. At present, the U.S. has initiated at least three programs dedicated to bringing such advanced aircraft into reality. Project Mayhem, which was set up by the Air Force Research Laboratory, is a devoted effort aimed at creating a combined turbofan scramjet propulsion system. This advanced technology is designed to propel larger payloads over long distances compared to existing propulsion systems. In December 2022, the Air Force granted a substantial $5 million grant to a Virginia-based laboratory for the ongoing development of Project Mayhem. This program holds particular significance as it intends to power critical strike operations, intelligence surveillance, and reconnaissance missions. The proposed propulsion system would enable future aircraft to take off conventionally, travel at hypersonic speeds exceeding Mach 5, and then land like any other aircraft. The innovation lies in the combination of two distinct engines, scramjets and turbofan engines, Scramjets, derived from supersonic ramjets, have been in testing for decades, and Project Mayhem aims to leverage their capabilities alongside turbofan engines for a comprehensive solution. With advancements in scramjet development, demonstrated notably by NASA's X-43A, Project Mayhem foresees turbofan-powered takeoff, accelerating to speeds beyond Mach 2. Once at this velocity, the scramjet takes over, propelling the aircraft beyond Mach 5 and potentially reaching speeds surpassing Mach 10. 
Full development and testing of Project Mayhem are anticipated to conclude by October 2028. Another hypersonic missile being developed is the Dark Horse from Hermes, an Atlanta-based aviation firm. It is an innovative hypersonic, uncrewed, remotely piloted aircraft. While specific details about Dark Horse remain confidential, certain assertions can be made based on the available information. Dark Horse is distinct from Project Mayhem in its approach, opting for a ramjet rather than a scramjet in its combined cycle engine, known as Chimera, with an estimated cost of $18 million. Ramjets and scramjets share similarities, yet the way they operate is quite different. While scramjets absorb and ignite supersonic air in their chambers, ramjets decelerate supersonic air before ignition, using slower, easier-to-ignite air. The Chimera engine, leveraging the Pratt and Whitney F-100 engine as the turbofan component, is anticipated to power Dark Horse to hypersonic speeds below Mach 6. In December 2022, successful demonstrations of the engine's transition from turbofan to ramjet power in a wind tunnel were conducted, with plans for operational testing on Dark Horse by 2025. The United States is not only developing hypersonic missiles, it is also focusing on next-generation hypersonic jets. An example is the SR-72, often referred to as the Son of Blackbird, which is undergoing development by Lockheed Martin, the world's largest defense contractor. Diverging from its predecessor, the SR-71 is envisioned to possess a diverse array of weaponry, including guns, missiles, and laser-directed energy weapons. Designed for reconnaissance and surveillance, the SR-72 will be equipped with highly sensitive intelligent gathering sensors and state-of-the-art cameras capable of capturing images spanning nearly 100 miles. The aircraft is projected to achieve a top speed of Mach 6, doubling the speed of the SR-71. This remarkable velocity is made possible through a combined cycle turbofan scramjet engine, developed collaboratively by Lockheed Martin and Aerojet Rocketdyne. Lockheed Martin's extensive experience, backed by NASA's $1 billion investment, positions the SR-72 at the forefront of hypersonic aircraft development. The unit cost of the SR-72 is estimated to be $1 billion. The U.S. military has also invested heavily in smart satellites that will go into space and track their rival hypersonic weapons. The United States Space Defense Agency shared that a satellite costs $1.3 billion to make, and they will be making 28 small satellites that will go into space in three years. These little satellites have a special job. They're supposed to give the first warnings and track missiles as part of the future national defense space architecture. This national defense space architecture is made of two parts, the transport layer and the tracking layer. The transport layer is like a transmitter that will make sure military information can be sent quickly and reliably all around the world to different military devices. It's going to have a bunch of satellites, maybe between 300 and 500, circling around in low Earth orbit. When it's all done, almost the entire Earth, like 95%, will have at least two satellites in view at all times, and almost the whole planet, about 99%, will see at least one satellite all the time. It's kind of like they're setting up a big network of satellites to keep an eye on things and make sure everyone can talk and share information really fast. This way, they're making sure they're ready for anything and can stay connected no matter what. It's like a giant space team working together to keep things safe and connected for everyone. The next part is the tracking layer and its job is to keep an eye on things. It will give global warnings and track advanced missiles, especially the really fast ones, using special space technology like sensing algorithms and smart processing. The U.S. Space Defense Agency recently decided to spend $1.3 billion on the first set of these tracking satellites. They gave $700 million to L3 Harris Technologies and $617 million to Northrop Grumman's Strategic Space Systems. Each company will make 14 satellites, and there will be a total of 28 prototypes sent into space in a few years. They plan to do this with four separate launches of seven satellites each, starting in April 2025. These satellites will go into different orbits, sort of like different paths, 
so they can cover the whole world from the north to the south. SDA Director Derek Turner explained that this way, the United States will have a constant watch over everything happening in the sky. It's like they're creating a super watchful eye in the sky to make sure they see any advanced missiles early enough to intercept them effectively and keep everyone safe. The fact that these special abilities are almost ready to be deployed shows how fast the U.S. changed its plan for keeping an eye on missiles from space. Just four years ago, General John Hyten, who was in charge of the U.S. Strategic Command back then, was telling everyone how important it is to make the Pentagon's space sensors better to handle new dangers. And guess what? Congress agreed big time. In the year 22, they gave the Space Defense Agency an extra $550 million to hurry up and put in place a really important part called the tracking layer. General Hyten also pointed out this need for a change, and the Congress shared and agreed on his perspective on this as well. They even gave extra money to the SDA in 2022 to speed up making the tracking layer, which is like a special space system to keep an eye on missiles. This quick change and support from Congress show how serious they are about making sure the U.S. is ready and protected in space. It's a fast and important decision to upgrade their space defense strategy and keep everyone safe from possible dangers. Right now, all the departments are working together on the National Defense Space System Plan. They're changing how they do things to be ready for new dangers. Instead of having only a few big satellites in space, they're making a group of hundreds of smaller ones. This way, it's not easy for others to block the view of U.S. military satellites in space. Everyone is agreeing to this new approach, making sure the service's abilities are spread out and not just in a few places to make sure that things are better and safer up there. This is a really important step, not just to protect against China's FOBs missiles, but also to stop Russia from causing trouble by messing with U.S. satellites. Reports suggest they've been trying to do this. Space is super important for military stuff, and now there's a rise in technologies that can harm satellites. Pictures from Google Earth show Russia building a fancy laser system at a space station. This laser can make satellites blind in space, causing some serious problems. So, by taking this important step, it's like the U.S. is getting ready to handle China's fast missiles and stop Russia from messing with their satellites. It's all about staying safe in space and making sure their important space tools work well. The building work is happening at Russia's Krona Space Facility under the Ministry of Defense. This place is known for having the impressive Rattan 600 radio telescope, which has been really successful. This gives us an idea that the anti-satellite weapon they're making there is probably of high quality. Information about this weapon was gotten from a detailed investigation that looked into lots of public satellite images, papers from Russian contractors, and financial documents from Russia. It's like they're putting together puzzle pieces from pictures, papers, and money information to figure out what kind of weapon Russia is making to harm satellites in space. This investigation is like shining a light on something hidden so we can better understand what's going on at the Krona Space Facility. It's all about checking out the details and connecting the dots to see what's happening with this anti-satellite weapon they're building. The investigation uncovered a project called Kalina, described in financial documents obtained by the Space Review. This project involves creating a laser system for electro-optical warfare, designed to permanently blind enemy satellites. The laser pulses from Kalina are so bright that they can damage optical sensors. Unlike temporary blinding lasers called Dazzlers, Kalina is meant to cause lasting harm. It includes a special tracking system with adaptive optics to handle disturbances in the atmosphere. The laser itself has a transmit-receive system, which measures the reflected laser light from its target. This feature helps Kalina aim directly at the optical systems on its target satellites, essentially destroying the crucial spots that, when damaged, render a satellite blind. In simpler terms, Russia is working on a laser weapon called Kalina, 
aiming to permanently blind enemy satellites by using a super bright laser, unlike temporary blinding lasers. Kalina comes with a special tracking system and a smart laser to hit the most important parts of a satellite, making sure it stays blind. Concerning the potential disruption of American satellites, China is actively discussing its strategies. In a 2022 paper from the Chinese journal Modern Defense Technology, researchers at the Beijing Institute of Tracking and Telecommunications Technology proposed using both soft and hard kill methods to disable SpaceX's Starlink satellites and dismantle the entire operating system of the constellation. The paper emphasizes Starlink's value as a crucial military resource, offering stable communication for U.S. military units worldwide and the potential for high-quality images and live videos for American forces. This indicates China's interest in countering U.S. satellite capabilities for military advantage. These hypersonic programs aimed at defense have highlighted the United States' commitment to technological advancements and military superiority, responding to the growing hypersonic threat posed by near-peer competitors, particularly China. The development of these advanced weapons is a critical step in maintaining U.S. dominance and ensuring strategic capabilities in the face of evolving global challenges. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, click on the link appearing on your screen to watch another of our interesting videos. See you there!